Hello, was we're here back with another video, and yes, this is me on RS3. It's been quite a while. It's currently the day before Necromancy comes out, and I spent the better part of today kind of preparing myself, getting myself ready for Necromancy, whether that be um, getting my accuracy perked out, um, getting some Slayer tasks done to get some Slayer points to buy some Ushaptis, got myself up to a 2600 task streak, and get some souls. Uh, completing all the fort quests, just sort of catching up on everything I missed. And then at the same time, um, I kind of want to mention that I'm not racing this, nor do I uh, think that I would be able to race it even if I was in a position to take the time off work. Uh, just due to the fact of that I'm, I'm kind of... This isn't really my forte. Archaeology um, had a lot of things to figure out, but I think this is going to be a little bit more straightforward. Uh, I do have three sets of souls uh, that I pre-got. I got the Banshees, the Ankus, and the Bound Skeleton. Uh, this should get me up to level 90, and then I'm going to wait for the future of that to see how like the metas progress. Again, not racing, so I don't need to develop the metas or be ahead of the train. I can, I can follow behind. Um, I did also do a Zuck run to get my one Igneous Stone to make the Zuck Cape uh, after doing I do a kill and run. Probably do that around like level 70 or 80 in Necromancy. Um, I do have some other things to buy tomorrow once it comes out, once we see exactly what we'll need. Um, and that's what this 7 bill in cash is for. Should last us definitely at least to 120. Uh, maybe not all the way to 200 mil, but we will see. And I will catch you tomorrow when the skill comes out and you get my day one experience. And I hope you enjoy the video. All right, it's in. Uh, we can start the tutorial here. Hopefully it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll see. All right, let's actually pay attention to this tutorial because if I don't, then I won't know what's going on. Um, instead of speeding through it, saving 30 seconds, I think understanding what to do will help me out more in the future. Okay, so we, I guess we have to clear all the dust off uh, the places where we want to put all the stuff. I guess this is the ritual um part of the skill this is like the the passive part of the skill i think i understand so the tool tips on monsters are a little bit different so it's it shows your hit chance um and now that we have the one talent point we can unlock conjure skeleton warrior okay so the necromancy has just begun i'm done the tutorial so it seems like the training method is going to be doing these souls early on and I got four souls uh, for completing that ritual. Come in here. I got some ectoplasm. Maybe that'll be useful in the future. Yeah, so I have one out of one elemental and two out of two commune. So I can keep doing this ritual over and over again to get 175 experience each time. All right, it looks like I have an early plan here. Uh, you get the first quest at level 20 necromancy, Killy Row. Um, and it gives better material ritual so maybe that'll uh, give us some stuff plus some um, upgrades to level 20 um, and then at level 24 we can do rune mythos uh, which gives a necromancy xp lamp and lesser regular and greater essence rituals so i think i'm going to do that at level 24 um, and then all the other quests 46 65 75 85 95 um and what's this last one? 32. So maybe I'll get the the 32 quest. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to do this all the way up to level 20. All right, this is going to be our last ritual. And then from there, we can start doing the quests. Get the nice little broadcast for level 20 necromancy. It's just this the clan chat is hilarious because everyone's already maxed. So uh, every time someone gets to a level milestone it's just broadcast city there is level 20 might as well get the last couple ticks down here uh you unlocked a lot of stuff from getting to level 20. all right time to do the quest okay quest complete uh we can now make up the tier uh 20 stuff but we're not killing things yet and we now have access to greater rituals what level is this going to get us uh, got us up to 21, so I think I'm going to go back and uh, 
see what rituals we can do now. And I think the overall goal is um, get as many souls as I can so I can unlock uh, better necromancy abilities. Level 24, time to start the next quest. This will be the one where we learn how to runecraft. Uh, might as well get the XP early. So quest done. I got a 1500 necromancy XP lamp. And we got access to a couple more uh, rituals. And we have the incantation to teleport to Um, which costs... Oh, no, doesn't cost anything, I think. Oh, no, five spirit runes. Uh, but that's 1,500 necromancy experience for the quest. Um, before I forget, let's pull this out here and put it behind, I guess, defensive abilities, because I'm not going to need those. Um, but I'm 26 necromancy, and I think I'm going to keep doing this all the way up to 30 and get some souls. Alongside um, gaining the souls here, um, I also need to actually enchant some of these bars. And that's because in order to upgrade the weapons, you need a total of 14 insold, or insold bars. Uh, I want to be able to level them up from 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 whenever I get the level. So before I finish off here, I'm getting these 14 souls and I, or these 14 bars, and I still need to do three more soul rituals. All right, this is my last ritual. I have my 14 bars. Uh, this will get me my 400 souls I need to unlock some abilities. Uh, along the way, we've been gaining levels. We're up to 36 now, uh, which means we have five necromancy abilities. 402 souls, so I can unlock the, the Conjured Putrid Zombie. Um, and the Command Skeleton Warrior once I get some talent points. And you get talent points by killing monsters uh, and gaining combat experience. I think the first one costs 2,000. Uh, but we're starting off here, and we're going to actually upgrade our weapons up to level 30. So we just come over to the Soul Forge here. I also brought the Hood to upgrade to level 20, uh, just because it is a task set uh, to upgrade a piece of the armor. Um, and I want to get that done, but we're going to make the Death Guard up to level 20. We're going to make the Skull Lantern up to level 20. And then at the same time, we're going to go up to tier 30, um, which I think I need to talk to uh, Killy here. So in order to upgrade to tier 30, uh, we need to fill up a Solar and, and just killing these trolls here. Um, and luckily, the Necromancy auto-attack, which attacks... Every three ticks is enough to one-shot these trolls. I now have the ability to make tier 30. So I can make the tier 30 Skull Lantern with my bar. And I can make the tier 30 Death Guard with my bar. And now I'm ready to start killing things. All right, because everyone's going to be killing a whole bunch of things, uh, my main method of training is going to be with the player-owned Slayer Dungeon. Um, I had Earth Warriors in here, um, but those are going to get uh, taken away because we want to have ghost-based enemies because you're going to get the bonus from Salve Amulet. You're going to get the bonus from the Ghost Hunter gear. You're going to get a whole bunch of DPS bonuses. I can use the Undead Slayer Sigil uh, to help me deal more damage. All right, we're back on the killing grind we're now killing banshees i put myself on the normal spell book to give myself the necromancy prayers uh that boosted my accuracy from 87 to 95 is pretty good on top of that i have my accuracy equipped uh the point of the accuracy is that i get access to perks which I otherwise would not have access to. And it feels weird to be on the normal spell book not having access to Soul Split, but the extra accuracy really helps because when I first came here, I had like 80 some odd uh, accuracy, and now I'm almost at 100. And once you're at 100, you're basically doing effectively 100% damage. Um, I think my plan here is to be uh, killing, uh, killing these Banshees until I get all the way up to level 50 or so. Uh, 50 to 60, and then I can move on to something like Ankus. Um, but while I'm killing things here, I'm gaining um, some talent points, uh, which will give me um, the ability to unlock more abilities. All right, uh, I got my second talent point, so I think I'm going to teleport back to the city of Um. Uh, luckily, the game is very helpful. And it gives us these runes, which we can use to teleport right there. Uh, don't need to do any rituals, but we can come to the Well of Souls. 
um, unlock our command skeleton warrior. Um, and then I, what, what do I need? Oh, I need level 40 necromancy to be able to unlock the next ability. Um, and it looks, yeah. So what 18,000 experience to get our third talent. Uh, but now I can command a skeleton warrior, uh, which will attack for me, which will be pretty interesting. Uh, let's see how that uh, works in practice. Okay, so once it's conjured, the ability changes to command, and then he'll attack your target. That's that's pretty good. That is that is some good damage. I sense the the theme with necromancy is spawning shit to kill shit for you. That is that is really cool. Uh, so now that I'm level 40, I can unlock another one of these, and I'm going to unlock Conjure, Conjure Putrid Zombie. I think kind of the idea is we get uh, these together, and we can conjure them up, um, and we can put like more than just the Skeleton Warrior. We can get the Putrid Zombie as well. As well. Uh, the, the Zombie does poison damage, so I think that's actually not worth getting. So we're going to move it over, because poison, like... I'll get less experience for this kill. I got 196 because some of the damage was poison. Well, this one, no damage was poison. Uh, or very little was poison, and I got 210. So poison is actually bad while trying to train. Uh, so the putrid zombie is actually not very good. All right, I did a little bit of a detour from the Banshees, and I decided to do Scoblins instead. Got a nice little uh, tip from a friend that they are better than Banshees, and it's... Uh, Turning out to be true, but I'm going to be camping this all the way up, I think, to level 60. I currently have the tier 30 weapons and I can go upgrade it, but I don't want to necessarily like lose this world. And it's only going to be about an hour to get up to level 60. Um, so I think it's actually probably worth it to just go to 60 and then backfill everything I need to do. Because once I get to 60, I'm going to be start doing like the tier two incantations. But level 50 has been obtained. I like myself a new ability, uh, both uh, Soul Sap and Soul Strike. So it looks like Soul Sap is the basic ability that's going to generate um, a residual soul stack. And then I can spend those residual soul stacks on kind of a quasi threshold ability. Um, which is a stun that deals 135% necromancy damage. Uh, on the Revel Bar, I put it where the uh, it stacks up first here, and then after that, I use Soul Strike. So I think my bar is in a relatively good state now. Uh, got myself um, using a lot of abilities, good Adren management. I think this is going to be pretty good for my XP per hour, and I hope I can push this up to... 200k per hour. All right, we're at level 60 Necro, so I think it's time to get out of here, uh, give someone else the world, and uh, start working on getting the actual uh, gear upgrades because we're only level 30 gear. Yeah, I think the Scoblins have kind of uh, done their course. I think it's time to move on to Ankus um, and get myself um, all the way up to level 66. So this task list, we need a meat pie, um, 50 undead. So we can go to our banshees and get that done. But first, I'm going to buy a meat pie. And I wonder at this point if it's like over a mil for the meat pie. Uh, it was 20k. <laughs> so I have the tier 40s built. And now I need to do the same upgrade task for uh, T75. And I need to get 75 uh, demon souls and some flippers. Uh, to finish the T50 upgrade, we have to get uh, Necromancy Flippers from these Mogers. Shouldn't be too bad. Uh, most people I've seen already have been getting it in like 20 or so kills. All right, we got the Flippers. Uh, I'm done here, and I can go back to um and get the level 51. And then we can potentially get the level 61 as well. I'm not sure if I need to do a separate quest for that, but if I can get all the way up to 60 right now, that'll be great. All right, I'm done with the Banshees in here, so I can remove all of them and move on to uh, the next monster, which is going to be Ankus, which kind of works out well. Not only do I need them for experience, but I also need them for this T60 upgrade. Um, so we got the five Ankus in there, and now our Agropots should just carry us to Kingdom Come.
All right, I went to the GE, bought a bunch of the ink, and now I can start doing the uh, next tier. But we're going to add these speed um, additions to the two extra rune spots um, so that we're able to uh, uh, increase the speed at which we do rituals. So our soul attraction is higher. We're up to 160%. And at the same time... Uh, we are doing our uh, insole material a little bit faster, and we need to do this seven times in order to get our upgrade to tier 60. All right, I'm now able to make my tier 60 weapons here. Again, I forgot to take them off so it didn't auto-populate, but I can make my tier 60 skull lantern, adding a little bit to it, and then a tier 60 death guard, and we can start necromancing. So it turns out that if you overload yourself, you can actually put down um, glyphs that you don't have the level for yet, but you're boosted up to. So now that I'm 62, I'm going to do the 2000 souls to unlock the uh, spectral sight ability. And I have the commune set up here. And then at the same time, I have two multiplied two glyphs and each one gives a 40% increase to your output. So I should get an 80% increase to my output. So I'm hoping that I'm going to get 28 souls when I do this. I got 36 souls. Holy crap. That was more than I expected. Very good. This is going to be the last ritual I'm doing for now. I've been here for quite a while. And I have 2980 souls. This last one will get me another 36. Getting me above 3000. And that means I can go and start to do all the quests. Uh, the Spirit of War unlocks the Harmod fight. I think that's what it's called. Hermod. And we need to kill him in order to unlock the T70, T80, and T90 armor. So that is kind of the goal right now. And with our 3,000 souls, we're also unlocked up to tier 4 here. I have three talent points available. I'm definitely going to spend one on the Spectral Scythe here, um, as that's a really good ability. It's basically Cleave. Um, then Spirit Pack, I think that's probably worth it uh, for an extra one. And then here uh, is Command Vengeful Ghost, uh, which will uh, allow whatever the Ghost attack to deal extra damage. So that is very good. And now it's time to make the armor. I've had the tier one armor the whole time uh, because I have uh, been using uh, Accrasades to get perks, but I want to get up to tier 60 armor in order to make the T70 armor eventually, which then gives damage bonus and can be augmented. There's the Death Warden T50. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it at like 75 mil a piece, see what happens. It didn't buy, so I guess I'm going to make the armor myself. All right, I didn't get the T50 set, but I did get the T40 set here. Uh, but they have this thing where you can't actually equip it. But once I craft the level 50 armor, I should be able to equip it because I'll have crafted the level 50 armor. Um, but that's kind of hoping. Otherwise, I just wasted a lot of money buying there. Um, but we're going to be doing um, lesser insole material. And we're going to do the Spider's Fill Hood here. And then I have a bunch of extra spots now that I didn't have before. So I can go ahead and put down another two multiplies. So I have a total of four multiplies, which will give me not only higher soul attraction, uh, but will also make it so I get a lot of extra stuff out of it. We'll see how many thread. Maybe we'll get a two, three thread. Uh, let's see what's in the ritual chest. I got two thread that time. Um, so yeah, I think I'll be able to get two thread every single time. It means I only need to do this one one more time. All right, I should be able to upgrade all my items to tier 50 now. Yep, the game lets me equip them, so we are all good. Uh, now to turn them into tier 60. All right, I'm done. I have all the cloth and thread I need to go from T50 all the way up to tier 70. So I now have full T60 armor, um, and the next upgrade is actually going to turn it into power armor, uh, which will then be augmentable. 
And the first quest we're going to do is the Vessel of Harbinger. We start at death here. Quest complete. I got a 10,000 uh, Necromancy XP lamp and a 5,000 prayer lamp as well. And now I'm up to level 67. Uh, and it's time to do another quest. All right, time for the boss fight. Quest is pretty much done. And we'll be fighting Hermod, the Spirit of War. Oh, almost got through without him summoning his uh, minions, but we'll heal up a little bit on the Armored Phantom. And then finish off Mr. Hermod here. I guess because he's a necromancy, he can bring uh, them back. But the quest is done, and then we'll be able to fight Hermod. But I'm not going to fight Hermod just yet. Uh, because I want to get up to level 70, get the Kiln Cape, you know. Uh, do a bunch of stuff before finding that out and getting these Hermotic plates. Because uh, that's how you get the T70 armor. Anyway, we also picked up a Necromancy Lamp, which gave us 67 Necromancy. Actually, 45,000 experience. Uh, basically, almost to 67. And now we can do a little bit more AFK, get up to 70 Necromancy. There is level 70 with the Necromancy skill. Time to upgrade our weapon once more. And by being level 70, I can talk to Selene here. I can learn a new prayer, and I can get Leech Necromancy. There, Leech Necromancy attack, Leech Necromancy strength. And then at 90 Necromancy, we'll be able to learn Sorrow, which is the turmoil variant for Necromancy. So what we need is five Royal Chitin from the Calphite Queen and five Hideous Moleskin from the Giant Mole. Should be fun to kill some low-level bosses with Necromancy. Got my five chitons here. That didn't take too long. Minute and a half kills. And then um, now to do it at Mole. Mole is probably going to be a little bit worse. Uh, just because you got to run around a lot. And uh, let me grab a couple more restores. All right. That's five mole kills down. Uh, I think we're ready to upgrade our weapons and armor. Well, I guess part of the armor able to make our t90 weapons we got four in sold bars here and i need to get the other four uh from the bank so i'm also able to upgrade my death guard to level 70 here uh, and now i have t70 weapons and there's a special attack um on the death guard here where um it has the ability to deal 7,000 damage for 25 percent spec also stuns it, and also has a chance to do bonus damage. Seems pretty good. On top of that, because I got the one Hermotic Plate from the quest, uh, I can make the Death Dealer Rope Top, which is going to be T70 Power Armor. Very nice. Death Dealer Rope Top going to give me 26 extra damage in Necromancy. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and take out the... Uh, gizmos that are on here and put them on the rope top because I can go ahead and augment it as well. And we can add on perks. Uh, if I go into my gizmo bag here, I think I had prepared uh, a couple perks. I want to get precise six genocidal and then equilibrium four ruthless three. Uh, that can go in the main hand and that can go on the offhand. And now I'm perked out. Um, time to go do a kiln. We do not talk about how close that was. I fucked up the dull wave and used all my food, but uh, I got it, and I should be able to claim the cape here. The Toscar Mole, and there we go. We have the Necromancy Cape. We can get the hell out of here. Man, I suck at RS3 PVM right now. Now, to fix it, what we do is we take our Zuck Cape and an Ignea Stone. Um, and what we do is we dismantle the hardened Zuck cape, and we'll get back all our original capes. Um, and then we use the... We craft with the Igneous Zone to make the Igneous Calmore, which is the Necromancy uh, Mage Cape. And it's going to make Death Skulls do something different, but I want those combined Zuck cape. We're going to combine all four of them together, and now we have our Igneous Calzuck again. Um... I'm very embarrassed with how that, that went at the end, but we made it through.
and it looks like it affects the ability of uh, Deskals. Now it'll cost 60% uh, Adrenaline, and it will deal between 225 to 275% Necromancy damage per hit, and it'll bounce up to six times. So I guess it's time to start Mr. Hermos and try to get that second plate. I got my second Hermotic plate, which means I can get out of here. I'm able to upgrade both the legs. We use the equipment dissolver. We're going to dissolve the equipment. We'll recover the gizmos, and then we use the gizmos on here. And now we have the perks on our level 70 Death Adder, and we can go back to killing those, those Ankus. Well, not Ankus. We're going to upgrade them a little bit, but we're going to go AFK some mobs again. All right, that's level 76 Necromancy, which unlocks the Living Death, which is the ultimate ability. Sends you the Sunshine, but instead of changing all abilities, it only does like a couple of the Necromancy abilities, but they're incredibly powerful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slowly move it along my bar as to not mess with my bar, have it be in the same order, but I just want Living Death at the front. Uh, because I think it's probably the best use of my adrenaline if I ever get to 100. Now that I'm 60k away from level 80 necromancy, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the next quest in the quest series because it's going to give 60k necromancy experience. And to do that, I need to get this um, necromatic focus. So I came over here um, to it. Unfortunately, I didn't prepare it ahead of time, but it's only going to take about five minutes to get this. Um, this resource here, and then we can do the quest, which should be pretty quick. 60,000 necromancy experience. We got four extra incantations we can learn. And once I use this lamp, we will get up to level 80 necromancy. And we have now level 80 in every skill. But now let's see what uh, the dwarf lady has in store for us for getting T80. I think we can avoid it and do T80 tank. And that way, uh, we don't need to do the next kills, which is the T80 power. Over here. <laughs> yeah, so I can do tier 70, I can do tier 80, or I can do tier 80 power. So I'm going to pick tier 80. So we're going to use the Mask of Vines to get a Zdenko task, because I think it'll be the quickest of the tasks we can get. Uh, yes, assign me this coaster. We got 233 mutated Jadinkos. Um, and now we can go kill those. Got the Slayer task done, got the 150 kills, and now it's time to go to each of the God Wars to get this charged. Uh, I've already done General Grodar and Kriara. Uh, going to Krill next. And I put on the Totem of Intimidation uh, so that I would be able to just come in here and in an instant encounter and then kill the boss. And now I'm able to upgrade it to tier 80. And to go from tier 70 to tier 80, I need the Death Guard, three Greater and Sold Bars, and then for this one, I also need three Greater and Sold Bars. So I need to make six Greater and Sold Bars. Let's get to that. Upgrade the Skull Lantern to T80. And then upgrade the Death Guard to T80. It's nice that like they keep the perks and everything. And now we have... T80. I think the special attack is going to be the same. Um, and now I have the tier 80 weapons, and I think I'm ready to go back and uh, just grind out some more levels up to probably level 90. I think I'm going to grind out to level 90, and then we'll see what's up. It is now the second day. I did a little bit of training. Um, I'm now currently 89. I did some Abyssal Savages, which is what all the racers are doing, but honestly, anything that is an instance I don't know, it's just annoying, and I know that means that I can't race if I'm not doing anything that's not instance, but I'd rather keep my sanity, not deal with crashers, have a good time with this, and work my way up to 95 to be able to kill Raziel. I think that's going to be the goal for today. Yo! That's a very quick pet. <laughs> I hadn't... Uh... I saw a broadcast, and I'm like, what the hell is this? But about maybe a minute after the last clip, got myself the pet at level 89 Necromancy. I'm sure by the time everyone's like 120 and stuff, the pet will be pretty common. But right now, 
at level 89, I've seen maybe like three or four broadcasts for the pet. So it seems to be pretty rare. Um, so I clicked on the pet and I got Master of All and it's, they forgot to add like the pet count to it. Um, so I guess I have the Master of All title, even though I don't own the agility pet. So it looks like I can put on the title, so I'm gonna rock this title until they kick it off my character by fixing the bug. I reported it into Jagex, so probably by the time this video is up, they will have fixed it. Uh, but that's a cool little Easter egg from this update. Um, so I decided to do some Hermod. Um, I want to get the T90 power armor today, kill some Raziel. That's kind of the, the goal of the day for me. Um, not necessarily concerned about racing to 99 anymore. Uh, I kind of want to just have have some fun with the skill, and then the XP will come later, and I'll just AFK the XP during the workday. Um, but I, this kill here is going to be level 90, assuming I hit kind of well. Yep, there is level 90 in Necromancy. No plate, but at least I got two Spirit Mementos. Now I can start working on upgrading the weapons, but... In order to upgrade to tier 90 weapons, you actually have to go kill Ambi. I can't really kill it by myself, so I'm waiting for two friends to get to 90. One's already 90, and the other is like 20 minutes away from 90. Um, so once that's done, we'll go start our ED3 journey, and then probably once we have tier 90 weapons, we'll come back to, to Hermod and, and see how they're better. Hopefully I can start getting more plates. I have 82 kills, and it's 1 in 10, so I should have 8 but I only have four, so we are double drop rate. One thing I forgot to do is, now that I'm level 90, I can unlock the Terminal variant uh, from Selene over here. You need 95 Necromancy to get the tier after that, to get the um, Crazel Codex one, uh, but at 90, I'm able to learn Soro. Uh, it gives 10% damage. I was getting 8% before, and 357 Necromancy accuracy, and I was getting like 129 before, so that's going to be super powerful. Thankfully, we don't need to use any soul learns this time, but it's actually going to require three relatively tough boss skills, and I need to do them all with necromancy, all with this uh, kind of budget gear. Um, but we need to do a a Raxor kill. We need to do a ambassador kill, and we need to do a Virago Telus and Sola Kel, 0% Telus is probably the easiest of them, so that's what I'll do. Um, but uh, I'm going to get ready for my uh, team for Ambassador. So there's the uh, Ultvin Necro uh, Plasm, that's one out of the three. Now I just need to go do a Raxor and Telos. Telos is done. Uh, that was pretty easy. I think I have the area loot to pick this up because it's like impossible to click on. There we go, I got the Fragment of Anima. Am I going to get an orb here? It'd be hilarious if I did. No, we'll claim the loot. And now we need to do the Rax kill. Oh, souls, do your work. Yay, insta-kill. I don't even know what I did, but I got the kill. Oh, I forgot the fucking cloth. I hate this game. All right, round two. I actually have the cloth. I can use it on the Araxor body. And now I have Venomous Greater Insult Cloth, and I think that means I can turn in the T90 stuff and get my T90 weapons. Oh, I should loot. Terrible loot. There we go. I can now make T90 equipment for power. Uh, so if I take these off, I can make the T90 Skull Lantern. And the T90 Death Guard. Wait, what? What am I missing? Oh, I need five bars. I made a mistake on the math there. And 50 more miasma runes. So the massive development here. Um, souls are now really good insane XP per hour. So I'm doing a soul ritual, getting 20 souls each time. I need to get a total of 30,000. So I need to do 1,500 of these. But at the same time, I'm also getting 1.8 million XP per hour. Uh, due to all the attraction glyphs, and the what's really doing it is this uh, defile, this green goo that's on the ground. Whenever you get it done, not only do you get about like 15k experience for completing it, but it also gives you a Necromancer's Tome of Experience, 
which when you click on is like a complete tome from archaeology and that is 33k at my current level so i've been doing this for about 31 minutes and have over a million experience already uh, i guess i'm doing this to 99 as i'm a couple hours away that is level 95 necromancy which means i can now technically fight raziel after doing the two quests but I want to A, get my souls up because I need to get 30,000 souls here. And B, I want to get more experience and have my level be higher uh, when I go for the eventual boss kills. This XP fluctuates between 800k to 1 mil per hour depending on how much I'm paying attention, how the workday is going, and all that good stuff. thought I'd give a, another update here up to 97 necromancy and just over 2 million experience to go. Um, still doing this... Uh, triple attraction singular multiply one i think it's a good balance like i'm getting about a million xp per hour but i'm also getting about 120 souls uh on every single uh ritual so that means i am slowly but surely working my way towards getting to 30,000 souls even though it may take me till 15 20 million experience or some odd to get there i am making progress on top of that, because I'm getting so many events, I've actually been able to maintain these powerful communions. And I haven't uh, used a single reinforced dragon boat, which is very weird to say. Anyway, I'll probably check back in with you guys when I get to 99 necromancy. And with this last random event, I'm going to be picking up 99 necromancy if I can ever click on this glyph. There is level 99 at Necromancy, giving me level 99 in every skill, and I have my max cape back. Now, if you leave mid-ritual, um, it deletes it, like, you have to restart. So I'm going to complete off this ritual, and then we'll, we'll talk about how uh, the 99 grind went. The XP per hour maintained uh, varied between 800k to 1.2 mil per hour, depending on how much I was paying attention. While I was eating dinner, 800k per hour, or while I'm talking and I'm missing random events. But while I'm full focused, I was getting up to 1.2 million XP per hour. And this whole time I was doing souls uh, with the powerful memento on here. Because with this setup I have, I actually profit on the mementos. It's very weird to think about, but uh, because I'm doing so many random events per ritual... I get back more than one pow powerful memento um, per time. Um, and I can show that off by going into the ritual chest. How many, what do I have in here? I have 34 powerful memento in here. Um, and if I put it in the focus storage and deposit them in here, I now have 41 powerful memento. And when I started this, I had 43 powerful memento. So in the span of what is that? 4 million experience. I lost two powerful mementos and gained so many robust. So I'm not worried about running out. Um, in, it's funny in the like my total bone usage, I bought a thousand wyverns and a thousand dragon pin, pin bones. And I used like a hundred of each. So bones were never an issue with this method. Oh, yeah. Now that I've put the max cape back on, she is back inside um, the arena and we can purchase the necromancy cape from her. And we're going to buy a. 99 necromancy cape there you are and the reason why i bought this cape is because it actually has a special ability so i can pick an altergation glyph um and i'm gonna pick multiply two to add to it which will make my uh rituals a little bit better i currently have in the well of souls 17,431. i need 8500 for the tier six and then for the tier 7, I need 35,000. But for the quest, I also need 30,000. So I'm going to keep doing the same rituals I was doing before, except for I now have the multiply 2 perk in, in my necromancy cape, meaning I'm going to be getting uh, a total of 150 per ritual. Um, so if I'm 17,000 souls away and I'm 150 per ritual, that means I need to do about another 84 of them uh, to get this done. So for context of how long this took, it's 37 hours after release. It's 9 p.m. for me on day two, and it came out 8 a.m. on day one. Um, I did sleep for about five, five to six hours, but apart from that, I've mostly been playing um, 
in terms of the amount of people in the high scores, there's probably about 100 people, 100 or so people with 99. I'm probably in double digits still. I can't really tell with ranks because you don't need to lobby that much for this. Like, my XP on the high scores right now is still, like, level 90. Uh, just because I haven't lobbied for, for so long. Um, and th I know there's people who are 99 who aren't on there. But I'm going to guess somewhere around 100 would be, probably be where I am right now. And that, I think that's where I'm going to try to end up for 200 mil. People are definitely going to fall off. Like, the RS guy went to go do Raziel. And I think there's going to be a lot of people that, like, wanted to rush 99, but they don't, maybe not, don't have the fortitude to make it all the way to 200 mil. Level 100 at Necromancy, and this is super weird, but my combat level has finally changed. I now have reached a combat level of 139, which is so weird to think about. One thing I didn't realize, and I wish I realized a little bit earlier, is that the task set actually helps you get more experience while dealing with those rituals. Um, so I'm taking a little bit of time. I already uh, almost finished the easy diary and the medium diary. We only have a couple tasks left at this stage. Uh, I need to craft some flesh runes for the medium one. And then for the easy one, I have to kill a ghostly troll and then craft some spirit or bone rune. So hopefully I can do this in one trip up here, getting both flesh and bone runes. Oh, it goes in the pocket slot. Oh, that's interesting. I thought it was an offhand. So what does it provide? It provides a lot of small things, drop bones. So from all these uh, events, if you get any bones, put them directly in the chest. Then 10% chance to make four dose potions. I don't think that's really relevant. 5% uh, chance per impure essence to get extra runes. That'll be nice. I think that'll be probably pretty good money. And then plus 6% XP from dispelling ritual disturbances. So those events. And plus 5 necroplasm from rituals. Overall, I think this is a great task set. I'm I'm kind of sad that they didn't go all the way up to medium and elite, but I guess they want more content in the future. Anyway, this should help our XP. I'm going to track it now. I was at about 1 to 1.1 before, so I'm hoping this will bring it up to 1.2. Alrighty, uh, I'm done. My Well of Souls is up to, let's see if I inspect it here. I'm up to 30,003 souls, which means uh, I have all the souls I need to start the quest when I want to. It means I can swap over um, this from getting souls to getting something else that's going to net me, I think, a little bit more XP per hour. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take all the stuff that I got as loot and go sell it. So I think I should net a little bit more uh, just because I have all this stuff to sell. I think these um, robust mementos will be a couple hundred K. Yeah, that was 19 mil there. These powerful mementos, I think, will be at least one mil each. Yep, that was 97 mil. I have all these leftover bones. Yeah, so we're swapping over to Greater Essence as our ritual. And now I need to pull everything out of the ground, basically. Um, I guess I might as well just clear the full site. Um, and then the very last thing we need to do is we're coming into our cape and we're going to change the glyph over to attraction two here, getting me up to 1100% soul attraction. Now I should get more events more frequently and I'm going to reset the XP and see how well that does. Definitely much better. I'm getting over 1.7 and I've maintained this over like a 26 minute period. Um, so that's very good. One thing I also noticed is that it seems to be on a set interval. Uh, when the events come up uh, and it seems to be a gap of 12 ticks uh, so i got that one at 23 to 21 ish so we're in that range so i expect the next one to be from 11 to 8 and if it's consistent that makes afking it a lot easier so i don't have to like worry about staring at the screen intently i can just be like oh it's about 11 that's about when the event's gonna spawn yeah it spawned at 10. And it seems that the attraction determines the rarity of the event because me at 1100% now, I'm getting a lot more um, of those souls in the higher tier stuff than I was getting uh, when I was at a lower attraction. I think attraction both unlocks the ability to get stuff, but it also the higher it is, the more likely that the event that does spawn uh, will be good. This one will be around 57, 58. It's been pretty consistent. So I'll just... Free Jack the Bladed Dive is 58, and it's 
almost I want to say it's like almost always a soul storm. It's like an 80% chance of being a soul storm at this point. All right. I think this is going to be my last uh ritual for the day. Pretty late and I got work tomorrow, so I don't want to be too tired for that cuz it's a busy day meeting with clients and see what we got out of this. I've been doing this for an hour and 8 minutes. Um, so from that, I'll be able to see exactly what kind of GP I made, because I think I actually probably will have made GP. I don't know exactly how many inks I spent, but let's see what's in the ritual chest. First off, I got 2700 essence, and then I got all these mementos, because I, I had cleared those out before. Um, so the 42 powerful mementos that I got that hour, that should be about a mil each. Yeah, I got 1.5 mil. The robust here, we're up to 63 mil. 64 mil, maybe. Let's see what happens to the essence. 77 mil. So I did spend on ink, uh, but I made about 78 mil worth of loot. Well, also ectoplasm, but I'm going to keep this because I'm going to need it for myself. Uh, so I got about 77 mil worth of loot. So they added back in the goo random event, uh, which means the XP per hour should go up. Uh, don't look at the XP per hour right now because that's an extremely small sample. I reset it now that the goo uh, is back. See, like doing that one event knocked it up to uh, 2 million XP per hour. Uh, but once it gets to like 10 or 15 minutes, I'll know my XP per hour, and I believe I'll be over 2 mil, um, maybe higher if I'm able to get tomes. Uh, but I've had about five or six of the goo so far, and I am not getting any tomes. So I think they are just pretty rare. Um, I am doing Powerful Essence, and I have down three Attraction at three Glyphs. And I also have Speed 1 in the Cape. Uh, this makes it be like a right time, because every 12 of these is when you get an event. So I'll get an event with like five or four left. Yeah, there's my last event. And then I can roll right over to the next one. Well, if I didn't have that speed one, I would have to do like five or six more of these ticks. That is my only, or that is my second tome that I've gained. Uh, it's going to be about 50k experience, so that'll be pretty nice. Um, it seems like these are pretty rare. Like, I've done this for maybe two hours, two and a half hours, three hours post-patch. I've only gotten two tomes, so maybe you can assume one tome per hour, maybe one every two hours, so... It's such a mi minor part of the experience now. Uh, I'm going to try to keep this XP up per hour up for another 5 hours, which will get all the way uh, another 9 million experience, maybe 10 million experience, getting myself up to 45 million by the end of the day. Who knows? We'll see how far my body can last, because I am not liking this lack of sleep, and I'm going to try to get more than 5 hours tonight. Uh, just... I'm not going to make it all the way to 200 mil doing three or four hour uh, night sleeps. So I have a new strategy with the monkey. I kind of let it go. That one moved pretty quickly. So now I'll click on it, look for the sparkles. It's all the way over there. Don't need to leave the platform at all. Um, and that should boost the XP rate up from like the 1.85 I'm getting to hopefully over 2 mil. Because uh, I can just keep progressing and moving towards the next event. And the more that I'm moving towards the next event more xp per hour i'm getting and with this event a couple minutes later picking up 111 on the necromancy skill nine more levels to go and my combat level is now up to 146 and that's just such such a weird number there is level 112 necromancy end of the day here i've been going for eight and a half hours uh, with only like one minor break, maintaining 1.9 million experience throughout that total of 16 million in that little setting. And I think that's going to be the end of the day. I did gain like, including the morning, I did another morning session. I probably gained close to 30 mil XP today. Um, it's currently the Wednesday, I guess it's Thursday morning. And I think I'm going to try to keep up that like 30 to 40 mil every single day, all the way to 200 mil. And I can get it in maybe a week total. We'll see. We'll see how 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 life goes. All right. There is level one thirteen necromancy. That is halfway there, halfway to one twenty. 
Uh, I'm getting about 2.1 mil XP per hour on the next day now that I've reset the XP. Also, have three tomes, so if I use that, that would be like 0.2. I think if I was full try hard, only paying attention here, I could peak at maybe 2.4. Uh, but 2.1 to 2.2 is pretty good. So this is going to be a fun little moment. I have nine tomes in my inventory, and uh, now that my inventory is full, I want to use the tomes so I can start getting more. Um, so that is what I've gained today. It seems to be about one an hour for the tomes, and I'm gaining 70k experience per tome. So that jumped me all the way up to level 115. 116 necromancy four more levels to go and it looks like this level is going to take three more hours so i'll definitely get that tonight because it's only 9 p.m i click away of raziel whenever i get a level because i haven't done the quest it'll be pretty funny getting 200 mo without the quest but it is what it is one of the changes i made to help increase my xp per hour was i put speed two inside the cape this makes the total number here 74, which means instead of 78, which means that each ritual is about five to six seconds less. But the downside of this is that the last event spawns when there is two or one left on the timer. Um, so that means I have to pay attention to not accidentally end the ritual while the event is active. Um, so it's a little bit of give and take. If you're not paying enough attention, speed two will actually be less XP per hour. But if you are paying sufficient attention, uh, you can save about five to six seconds per ritual. Just got 117, and that bumped me up to 150 combat. That's super weird to see. My inventory is full with tomes. Today has been a good day on tomes so far. I'm about four or five hours into the day, and I already have 10. Maybe they get more common as the level goes up. But I'll be able to use all 10 of my tomes here, and that will be an actually massive amount of experience. That, that was like 700k experience, and I'm basically right up to 119 now. And this XP per hour should bottom out. I was getting about 2.4 mil uh, without using tomes. Uh, so I think with the tomes, I'll get to like the 2.5, 2.6 mil XP per hour, which would give me another four or so hours until 120. There is level 120 in necromancy. I have mastered everything. I have the master, master max cape. And there is combat level 152. I don't, I don't really know what to say now. Apart from let's go do 94 mil of this. All right, ritual is going to be done here. I got 96 mil more experience to go. Now I kind of want to see, I'm going to pause this here. And I'm going to set an XP target for 200 mil. And it's going to take me 39 more hours to get this done at my current XP rate, maybe a little bit higher. It's pretty fire. It's kind of like the, the thieving cape, uh, but I like the skull on the back. And, uh, yeah, the 120 cape has uh, the same effect as the 99 cape, but it also has a 10% chance to not drain runes when using lesser or greater bone shield. But I'm going to be continuing to do rituals, go back to the ritual site and do this for another 96 million experience. And about eight hours after getting 120, I'm going to finally call it quits for the night. It's currently uh, 3.30 in the morning. Um, which is uh, about as late as I want to stay up. I do have 76 mil and change to go. Uh, so that's about 30 hours at my current XP rate. Maybe I can knock that down to like 28, 29 if I'm really paying attention. Um, so depending on how things go tomorrow, I may end up just pulling an all-nighter and getting it all done for maybe Sunday afternoon. Gives me the rest of Sunday to recover for work on Monday. Uh, but we will see. Anyway, it's time to do my daily trip to the GE. I'm about four hours into my marathon of what's likely going to be a 30-hour marathon of getting uh, 200 mil necromancy. The uh, ranks, I think, are up to 16. Omid and Joffrey just got there uh, 200 mil. So I'm, I'm definitely not getting top page. 
Uh, but if I keep this up, I might be able to pick up a, a late second page, maybe meme myself and get rank 69. If I can try to time that right, that'll be fun to time because I think there'll probably be like four or five people trying to do that. Uh, but one change I did make is I swapped over to the Powerful Communion um, ritual again. It's a little bit more expensive because I need to use these uh, Powerful Mementos. For every time I complete a ritual, I'm going to get 75 souls added to my chest. And I need souls not only now to get up to 35k, and in the future they're probably going to release higher tiers of content. So I might want to try to bank myself up to 40, 50k souls um, just for the next tier that they will likely eventually add to it. And this is going to be the end of the first session of the day here. I'm kind of breaking it up into four to five hour sections, um, and then I go to eat in between it. Um, just to give myself a little bit of a break, but the way let's here got uh, 200 mil all skills, and that's the point at which the front page is locked. The top 25 people have 200 mil. Just to show how far off I was, I was at 144 mil experience at the time. I was never gonna get it, even from the start. I didn't have the cash. I'd, if it was AFK combat. Um, I wouldn't have had the cash to buy the T90 out, the right souls in my dungeon, and it would I would have been very annoyed with fighting other people for mobs. So I definitely would not have been in the competition anyway. And then with this method, the XP they were getting just required too much GP. But I'm happy with uh, how things have gone. I got about a day, slightly less than a day, uh, I think at this rate, uh, my highest potential is maybe like that back end of third page. Uh, if people start to give up now that front page is gone. Uh, but on an overall basis, I think I'll probably end up somewhere like halfway through the fourth page. That would be my prediction at this point. Uh, 150 million XP in necromancy. I got 50 mil to go, so that's about 20 to 21 more hours of this. And uh, hopefully I can stay up long enough to get this uh, 200 mil all in one session. We'll see if I make it. I, I did get to watch Omid uh, go into a sleep to ride a delirium, so I hope it won't hit me when I'm close to 200 mil. I did get about... 20 to 25 more hours of sleep than Omid did this week. Uh, I think I'll be fine, but I haven't really done an all-nighter like this in, in years. Like, we're talking six or seven years. I had a bit of a crisis of faith, and I was trying to figure out, do I actually want to stay up? So I set myself a little goal of doing a power hour. Essentially, no distractions, just focus super hard on the screen, see what you can get done, maybe talk in clan chat a little bit, but nothing on the other screen and i was able to pull 2.57 million experience which is about as high as i've seen it for a long period of time so I'm pretty happy with that the only downside is well it's not really a downside uh but i should mention that that 2.56 million or whatever the number is um does not include tomes and i picked up three tomes this hour uh, so if I were to click on the three of those, I'll put that up to 2.7, 2.8. If I can maintain that experience the rest of the way, I can make it. I think I can make it. That means I'll get this done at 4 p.m., 5 p.m. the next day, and it'll have been like 28, 29 hours in, uh, in total of consistent playing with only taking breaks to walk for food. That's one thing I have been doing to like, myself is I put an embargo on delivery food. I don't actually order, order delivery food that much, but I put an embargo on delivery food uh, for this specifically because it's a good way to get some fresh air, get the legs moving, making sure I'm doing things, and it costs me like half an hour a day because I'll, I'll go out once a day to get food. And I think that's worth it for not only my mental health, but my physical health. I have hit a wall. It is 11 a.m., so I'm 25 hours into playing RS with only stopping for food. Um, and I'm not feeling too great. I really don't know how people do, like, 40 hours of this straight consistently. Like, I need sleep. Anyway, my XP per hour has dropped to, like, 2.3. 
I would say. It was like 2.45 before, but like I am using one hand. I'm not bladed diving. It's it, it's just not good. And I like when I click these, like sometimes I'll right click instead of left click. It is not pretty. But the good news is I have 2 million experience in Tomes Bank, so you can like knock a hour off this and I only have seven hours to go. I think if I can just get to lunch, if I can get to noon, I can get to lunch, I can get some food, go for a walk, hopefully that makes me feel better, and then I can just power out the final six or seven hours. That is 190 mil in necromancy. I have 10 mil to go. Well, really, I have about 8 mil to go or 7.9 mil to go because of the all the bank tomes I have. Hopefully... Hopefully I get through this soon. This is saying four hours. My XP rate keeps going down as the day goes on. I am just not having it right now, and I am I'm losing a little bit of control. All right, I am a hundred and ninety six mil XP, and it's time to go use all my tomes. Uh, I have thirty two, I think, um, and I want to do something cool, and I'm going to reset the XP. Yeah, right here just to see how high I can get. I think I'm gonna get to two billion XP per hour. Yeah, it's already two 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 the two hundred fourteen million XP per hour. And if I did my math right, I should be about five hundred K experience away. Oh, I'm a million experience away. Um, so we can go back to the ritual site, and I have about half an hour more to train. All right, 89k experience to go. We'll get it any second now. Two people just got 200 mil right before me. Am I am I going to miss out on the top 100? Hopefully they haven't lobbied yet, because I will be lobbying as soon as I get it. Okay, last event. I'm 16k XP away. If it's one of the higher tier events, I will be done here. This should be 200 mil right here. I think. Three, two, one. That felt good. Oh, I'm so happy it's done. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. I need a lobby to. To secure my rank. Alright, the final rank is 94. I missed out on two ranks when I was 100k away, but I'm up to 94. I got the top 100. That's all I really cared about, so I'm happy for that to be done. Uh, I'm at 40 hours? No. Can I do the math right now? What's 10 plus 2 plus... Seven. I'm 33 hours without sleep right now, so I'm going to go eat and go to bed. Uh, but before I do that, show what's in the ritual chest. I did, like, take shit out of here um, throughout the process. Um, but there's a lot of things here uh, that I can sell and see where I end up cash stack-wise. Because I started this with 7.6 bill cash, and I'll see where I end up by the time I've sold everything. All right, um, my final cash stack after selling all of the remaining necromancy items here. Basically emptied all of it except for some runes, which I'll need for Bone Shield. Um, uh, my cash stack's back up to 6.1 bill, which means I lost about 1.4 to 1.5 bill. Uh, considering I was doing a method that lost money for the last couple of days, I'll take that. Like That's a insignificant loss and if the ge tax didn't exist that probably would have been my entire loss wealth wise i'm still above the 80 bill mark so didn't really dip too hard into that but that is going down now just because everything is crashing i think it has to do with all the high taxes because everyone's buying bills of items on the ge and there's so many taxes thanks for being alongside my journey to rank 92 overall and rank 94 necromancy